Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to braze in an evaporator coil and what to watch out for, what are best practices. So we already have all of our joints cleaned. Uh, we have these as well cleaned. Basically we have seven eighths right here and we have three quarter here. I don't have enough three quarter line set to do a bend, so that's why I'm using a Service 90. It's a long turn uh, Service 90. And you see that this side is actually gonna go into our re reducing coupling right here and that's going to get mounted right here. We're going to be using 15% silver brazing rods and we're going to be flowing nitrogen through the system while brazing. So let me take you outside and show you how the nitrogen purge is set up. I've already pulled the valve cores out of the quarter inch valve core ports with my valve core tool and we're flowing nitrogen through the vapor line and it's coming back out through this line right here. So we've got both valve cores out. This is a 60 cubic foot nitrogen tank. And then here you have a nitrogen regulator with your tank pressure and then your output pressure. And then here you have a nitrogen flow regulator. So this right here is actually flowing at three cubic foot per hour. So three CFH and you can see the ball. I'm actually flowing more right now. And typically when you hook up, you wanna flow more just in the very beginning. And then you can go ahead and bring it back down to three CFH. We're using a 40 cubic foot B tank for acetylene. It's an air acetylene setup. Also, if you're looking for any of the tools used in this video, I have them all linked down in the comment and description section below. So now we're back inside and what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that when we're putting our fittings in, they're going in all the way. All right, so that one's in all the way. We can visually see that. We can go ahead and place this here. and that right there. The other thing I, I want you to make sure that you're aware of is if you see this right here, uh, you don't want it to have a springing action like want to come out this way. What you should do is get this mounted with a clamp. Uh, basically once you get this together, or you could even do it before possibly, but you want to go ahead and strap that line set so that it won't pop out at you while you're breezing. You want to make sure that you're wearing safety glasses and gloves and make sure that your face uh, is in a safe area while breezing. Another thing that you want to be aware of is making sure that your TXV and your TXV bulb are going to be cool while you're brazing. So whenever possible, you want to make sure that you have the line set out, not too far out in front of you, uh, but enough to be able to get this plate off. So that you can actually put a wet rag here or actually take the bulb off. And as well, when you're brazing the liquid line, you can put a wet rag right here to protect the thermostatic expansion valve. So we're going to go ahead and do the vapor line first. You see that I've made myself a little pan here out of a wet rag. So just in case braze was to fall, you don't want it to fall in the plastic pan. So you want to make sure you have uh, multiple wraps of a rag and then you can kind of make a little pan with it. But if you do have a ball of braze falling off of the joint that you're brazing, then that means that you're, you're using too much braze. So now we have our wet rag wrapped around the suction line and protecting the TXV bulb. So in this case, since the bulb was actually mounted to the suction line by the manufacturer with a stainless steel uh, line that was not screwed, it's actually crimp connected, and then it has foam tape around it. We're just going to leave that in place, and that's why we have our wet rag wrapped around it in order to protect the suction line. Remember that if the TXV bulb it heats up too much, it's going to end up applying a lot of pressure onto the head of the TXV and we don't want to damage the thermostatic expansion valve. So besides just having the wet rags, make sure you have a spray bottle, a cup of water, uh, just in case for safety sake. And also make sure that you have a, enough available fresh air where you're working at. Uh, you want to avoid breathing in any phosgene gas that may be created uh, from the remaining oil in these lines right here. And you could also wear a scuba tank, a self-contained breathing apparatus if need be.
once it's cool enough, you can go ahead and quench it with a wet rag. Uh, there is a fallacy out there that if you, uh, after, after the braze rod is dry, if you quench it with a wet rag, then that could make leaks, uh, but that's not really true. Uh, as long as the liquid is actually dried from your braze rod, then you can go ahead and cool it down with a wet rag. I just do it so I don't get burnt and then also the other thing is just to make sure that the bulb is cooled down. So we have our wet rag wrapped all around the TXV and we don't have to move the nitrogen outside because the nitrogen is coming in this way and then it's exiting this way, going back out to the open port outside. That's all dry, we're going to go ahead and cool it down. The next thing that we got to do is braze in the filter dryer. This is the last item that you braze in. And the reason for that is, is so that it doesn't pick up any moisture during the brazing process. So that's why it's last. And in this case, the arrow is pointed downwards because it's air conditioning only, and the liquid flow will be going towards the thermostatic expansion valve. I always braze these inside the house, always. There's never a time when I don't. Um, the only time is if the outdoor unit already has a filter dryer in it, actually mounted on the inside of the outdoor unit. But, you know, when we do mount these on the outside of the building, it's just a potential leak spot uh, that we want to avoid. Next, we're going to bring this cover plate back down again. And we're going to need to do that before marking out the filter dryer. The reason for that is, is we don't want to forget about it. And also, just so you realize, we have to have the filter dryer up high enough so that this can always come back out and swing up if need be, if we wanted to get into that area. I'm going to make my bottom cut first. Before I make my top, I can't just uh, mark it here and mark it here because this right up here is not flush up against my other line set and I want it to be nice and tight. So right now this is a little short and we're going to be making it up with this distance on the filter dryer. So I'm going to go ahead and cut right about here. And after I cut that, then I'll see if this will fit right into the end here. Now that I scarred it, I'm going to go ahead and take my tubing cutter off. I'm going to take my steel wool and prepare that joint. Some people don't do that, basically you're just getting any dirt, residue, or oil off of the outside. I'm going to use my stick reamer. Make sure that I don't have anything in the end. We're not going to stick ream this one because we don't want any shards to fall down on the inside. Once again, make sure to strap this 3 8 line so that the uh, filter dryer does not move while you're brazing it. If you're looking for any of the tools that are used in this video, I have them all linked down in the description below. Now you see that amount of paint that was burnt? That's even with me pointing the torch slightly upwards. 
I don't want to point it up too much because we have a ceiling up above us, but that just gives you an example of a potential spot. If you had this filter dryer outside, that's where the uh, rust would start at, right there, right where the paint is burnt. Soldering is also an option on all this stuff, but it just leaves a little bit of acid in each joint where you're, where you're soldering at instead of brazing. Then you also don't have to flow nitrogen as well. People ask me why I braze, and the reason for that is because uh, we don't see manufacturers evaporator coils or condenser coils soldered anymore. They're all brazed, so I'm just following the same uh, thing that they're doing. So I already pressure tested up to 350 PSIG. This max design pressure is 450 PSIG at the indoor rating plate of the air handler. Make sure that you don't exceed that. On older air handlers or evaporator coils that don't have a rating plate, they may be pressure tested only up to 150 PSIG as a max design pressure. Just make sure that you don't overpressurize the system which can make leaks instead of helping you find leaks. So just leave your pressure test on for about 10 minutes and then you can go ahead and release that and then do your vacuum. If you're looking for the tools used in this video, such as these or the nitrogen regulator or nitrogen flow meter, I have them all linked down in the description below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click on the link right here. If you want to subscribe, click right here. If you want to see a video of what happens when you don't flow nitrogen, click right here. And if you want to see a video of pressure testing a system, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.